Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Smoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Doggone if Dodge ain't grown a heap since I was here. It is very big, stuff. Front Street must have seven, eight saloons. A lot of towns I've seen don't even have that many houses. We are going to stay here? Now, Nina, I told you not to fret yourself. Nobody's going to bother you. Well, look there. The Longhorn Saloon. You know, a man might find whiskey fit to drink in a place like that. Just drop your reins over the rack, Nina. Your old pony ain't about to go nowhere. I will wait right here, Scott. Here in the dust and heat? Come on, get down off that old horse. You've been riding so long, you need to walk around some. All right. Anyway, it's cooler inside. If they got a ladies' parlor, you can sit in there. Well, sit on the porch. Come on. Got a parlor. There's a side door over there, Nina. You go on in and wait. Glass of rye, bartender. Hold that drink, bartender. Maybe you picked the wrong place to drink, mister. That's so? Places down along the river let Mex women come in and sit. I've heard tell. Maybe that's where you better go. Bartender, I ain't got my drink yet. Mister, you don't understand what I said. That bartender ain't gonna give you no drink. Maybe he is. No, he ain't. This place don't serve nobody that walks in with no dirty Mexican. All right, hold it. Very well, thank you. Hold it. All right, you men, take Lawson out to our horse trough and soak his head for him. The rest of you get about your business. Go on. You busted up what could have been a man-sized fight. Well, fights like that lead to killings. <laughs> Down if they don't. Now, you're a cool one, mister. You get that way in my profession. Oh, what's that? Army scout. I'm on my way to Fort Wallace. What's yours? United States Marshal. My name's Dillon. I noticed they paid you a heap of attention. I'm Cuff Peters and proud to know you. Marshal, I want you to meet somebody. This here is Nina. She's my wife. How do you do? Ma'am? Scott, I... Nina and me have been traveling quite a spell. Oh? Where'd you ride from? Come up from Texas. Figured we'd stay over here in Dodge if I can find a place. Nina's been feeling poorly. How long do you figure on staying in Dodge, Cuff? Can't rightly say, Marshal. Why? Well, you uh, made trouble for yourself when you hit Hank Lawson. That right. It'll bother him, Cuff, and he'll be after you. I know you can't make Fort Wallace, so it uh, might be better if you and your wife rode out to Fort Dodge and stayed there. He's right, Cuff. We should go on right now. We don't want no trouble. You've been riding enough, the way you feel. Besides, I got things to do. Look, uh, Cuff, I don't want any trouble here. I sure don't aim to cause any. Now, how about joining me in a drink, Marshal? I still got a glass of rye coming.
Dodge was real quiet for the next week, except when a drunk-up cowboy tried to burn the town down because he lost at a faro table. I kept an eye on Hank Lawson, but the trouble I'd been expecting between him and Cuff Peters seemed to blow over. Chester heard somewhere that Cuff had found a room for Nina and himself at the widow Helgerson's place out at the edge of town. I didn't see Cuff again except once when he drove the widow's buckboard into town, loaded it up with food and supplies, and drove back out. Then one morning while Chester was cleaning up the office, Cuff walked in. Morning, Marshal. Oh, hello, Cuff. I never did get a chance to pay you back for that drink you bought me. The time will come, Marshal. <clears throat> Oh, uh, Cuff, this is uh, Chester Proudfoot. Cuff Peters. Well, sir, I'm that proud, Mr. Peters. Howdy. <laughs> Mr. Dillon told me how you knocked old Hank Lawson across the bar at the Longhorn. I sure do wish I'd seen that. Uh, Chester isn't too fond of Hank. Well, if I'm going to hit him again, I'll let you know. Well, thank you. Marshal, what I come for was to get your help. Oh, what is it, Cuff? Well... I don't know much about doctors and all. They say you're a good friend to the one in town. Oh, I've known Doc for a long time. What do you need? Well, I'm not ailing, but Nina's feeling real puny. Oh? I think maybe someone should have a look at her. We ain't been married but five, six months. I don't understand much about women folk and their ailments. Uh, Chester, run up and get Doc, will you? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. You see, Marshal... The thing that bothers me the most is that I got to start out for Fort Wallace right soon. I already stayed here longer than I intended. Well, if your wife's sick, you can't take her with you on a ride like that. That's what I want to know from the doc. Is she too sick to ride? Well, you, you could leave her here. She could come on later. Mm hmm. I just pure hate to leave her behind if I didn't have to. Oh, uh, hello, Matt. Mm -hmm. Where's the patient? Uh, Doc, this is Cuff Peters, uh, Doc Adams. How do you do, Mr. Peters? Howdy. Uh, Mr. Peters wants you to have a look at his wife. I'm ready. My bag's by the door there. Doc, maybe you ought to know, before you come with me, my wife's Mexican. Well? The only reason I mention it, some folks here seem to take exception. Oh, for heaven's sake, standing here talking isn't going to help Mrs. Peters any if she's sick, you know. You ready to go, young fellow? I'm ready, Doc. Marshal, I want to thank you. Sure, Cuff. Goodbye. Go on. See you later, man. He's a nice little fellow, ain't he, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he seems to be, Chester. Hey, what's he do for a living? He's an Army scout, he says. On his way out to Fort Wallace. I always had in mind that scouts was more tricky. Shucks, he's no more sly than me. <clears throat> yeah, don't let Cuff fool you, Chester. He's small, but... Uh, he can take care of himself. Well, one thing, he don't seem to let nothing upset him, none. Well, he's worried about his wife, Chester. Plenty. Chester, you're going to get a bellyache. I can't help it, Mr. Dillon. Ever since I was a little boy, I just get a craving for wheat cakes at supper. Four servings? Well, I... It does make up to quite a pile, don't it? <laughs> oh, but then that molasses kind of keeps them wetted down. Oh, hello, Matt. <laughs> Chester. Uh, sit down, hello, Doc. Oh, well, yeah, thanks, sir. <laughs> Yeah, you gonna eat? No, Matt, no. I ate out at Widow Helgerson's with the Cuff and his wife. Uh-huh. How is she, Doc? She's resting, isn't she? <laughs> uh, you know, she's a pretty little thing, Matt. Just as nice and sweet. Yeah, she is. Uh, what went wrong with her, Doc? <laughs> Nothing that won't be right in about six more months. Well, that don't make sense, Doc. She's going to have a baby, Chester. She is. Hey, well, it only took a minute to see that. I guess Cuff meant it when he said he didn't know much about women. Well, I should think a baby be easy enough to tell about. At uh, Chester. <clears throat> oh, yes. Cuff sent a message to you, Matt. He's going on out to Fort Wallace. Says after he reports into the colonel and gets a place ready out there, he'll come back for Mrs. Peters. 
Now, that's a ten-day ride there and back, Doc. Well, I know, man. Well, why? Well, I don't like Mrs. Peters staying alone here in Dodge. Well, there's nothing to be worried about. She's in good hands here. Yeah, but the widow Huggerson's an old lady, Doc. She wouldn't be much help to Nina. Well, what kind of help would she be needing, Mr. Nellon? More than an old lady could give him. If Hank Lawson finds out that she's alone here. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... This coming Tuesday night, you have one date with Pam and Jerry North and another date with John Lund as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. If mystery is your dish, then listen in as Mr. and Mrs. North and Johnny Dollar dish it out. Remember, the night is Tuesday, the network is CBS Radio, and the shows are Mr. and Mrs. North and yours truly, Johnny Dollar. They're here on most of these same stations this coming Tuesday. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. About everything, Mrs. Peters? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'll give you a hand out to the buckboard. Oh, it's not that much. I can carry it. Well, I'll get the door for you then, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Good day. Uh, good day, ma'am. Well, if it ain't Mrs. Peters come to town to do a week shopping. I beg your pardon? Excuse me, ma'am, I ain't being very polite. This is Kane Twig. I'm Hank Lawson. What do you want? Now, surely you remember me, ma'am. You ought to. I was a fellow your husband hit in the mouth his first day in town. I remember you. Now, let me pass. Well, now, ain't I being a miserable cuss letting you carry all them heavy sacks? See, i help you some. Please. We'll just put them in the wagon for you. What? Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was mighty careless of me. They slipped plumb out of my hand. <laughs> I hope there was nothing in there to break. Leave me alone, please. <laughs> well, now, Mrs. Peters, I don't know why you're upset. You know I wouldn't do nothing to harm a fine lady like you. Besides, your husband might try to give me another lesson in manners, and that scares me real bad. <laughs> I just want to show you how much I learned. Now, you go on and get into that buckboard. <laughs> All we're going to do is just start you for home, Miss Peters. Untie them lines so we can face that team down the street. Sure. Now, like I say, ma'am, I don't want you to fret. <laughs> Stand aside, Twig. All right, ma'am, hang on. <laughs> She's all right, Matt. She's fine. And the baby. There wasn't anything I could do. I... Those miserable, filthy now, beasts. Take it easy. Kate. Take it easy. What are you talking about, Matt? Those men should be No, no, no. Get... Matt did all he could. He even roughed them up a little on the way to jail. Oh. And then yesterday morning, the judge fined them and turned them loose. Find them? Probably all of $50. Kitty, be sensible. You and your precious law. I'm sick of it. You have to go by it, Kitty, whether it seems right or not. I don't have to do and nothing. Now, Kitty, don't talk like that. There's a man. I'd shoot him in the belly. Oh, now, Kitty. <laughs> oh, leave me alone, both of you. Uh, Kitty. Look, Kitty. <laughs> Why don't you go in and, and talk with her, huh? 
She needs another woman. Huh? Go on. What are you going to do? Well, there's nothing more I can do. Officially. No, I guess that's right. I... Look, Doc, I want you to keep Nina in your office. You can keep an eye on her there. Cuff will be back in a few days. And then... And then you will tell him? Yeah. Yeah, then I'll tell him. Chester. Oh, Mr. Peters. Uh, Cuff. I just got back. Widow Helgeson says there's been an accident. I should come see you. Well, uh, your wife was hurt bad, Cuff, but she's better now, though. Where is she? Uh, she's up in Doc's office. Uh, Chester will show you. I know the way. Just makes me sick, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, he's likely been in the saddle all day riding to get back to her. Then he gets here and... How was she tonight? Well, she ate the supper Kitty brought over. That's more than she's done in a week. You know, I'd kindly hate to be Hank Lawson. Have you seen him around? Yes, sir. Him and Twig been hanging around the Longhorn. Hank asked me, was anybody looking for him? And he laughed. What'd you say to him? Nothing, like you told me. I just walked on out. Yeah, good. What do you figure Cuff will do, Mr. Dillon? I don't know. Cuff's so mild and quiet and all. But I got a feeling he'd be mighty mean if once he got right. I, I want to thank you, Marshal, for all you and... Chester, Doc done for Nina. I'm sorry, Cuff. Now, I wonder if you'd hold my gun for me. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to look for Hank Lawson, and I'm going to mock him. Mock him good. That way somebody's going to get hurt. That's a fact, Mark. Look, Cuff, I won't stand for a killing. Now... Nina's well enough to travel. You, you could start for Fort Wallace. We'd fix a bed and a wagon for I'm you. I'm going to start for Wallace, all right. But not until I've seen Hank Lawson. Well? Will you hold my gun? Till you come back for it. Thank you. Oh, uh, Cuff. Yeah? Um... Uh, Chester and I were just talking about going up to Longhorn for a drink. We thought maybe we might walk with you. The company'd be fine, but it's my deal. Sure. see the marshal come along so he wouldn't get hurt. I'm just here to see that no shooting starts, Hank. Yeah. What's on your mind, Cuff? I left my gun at the marshal's office. So? After you drop yours on the floor, I'm going to make you bleed. Figure to take me with your fist? That's right. <laughs> All right, boys, move back. Make a little room here. 
All righty, Cup. Load my gun down. Chester, just so Hank's friends don't get too excited and maybe want to help him out, move down to the end of the bar. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon? There'll be no gunplay here, Hank. What's between you and Cuff, you'll settle yourself. Right in here. That's good enough for me, Marshal. All right, little fella. Come and get it. Now I'm going to take you apart, Lawson. Bit by bit. That's the way you think. <coughs> uh, Get up, Lawson. Never mind, Marshal. He's going to fight with a knife. I'll fix me one, too. Yeah. Now, Lawson, if you're going to fight to cut, I'm ready. Fight or drop it. Now get out of here. Because if I see you again before I leave, I'm going to finish what I started. I ain't seen anything like that since I left Waco. Cub, as soon as you got your breath, I, I'd like to buy you that drink I owe you. Thank you, Marshal. I figure I could use it. Because my wife and me's got a long ride ahead of us. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin and Lawrence Dobkin, with Lillian Biaf and James Eagle. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Later tonight on most of these same stations, Herb Schreiner will take your sense of humor in hand and give it a once-over wonderfully on Two for the Money. Hoosier Herb and his droll wit are an irresistible combination for merriment. The quiz part of Two for the Money makes the show that much more interesting to hear. Remember, Two for the Money later tonight. George Walsh speaking. Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy open Fire on Your Funny Bone Sunday nights on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>